So today, I want to spend with spend some time with you presenting something to you that some of you probably have um, played with before at some point in your life. Um, I'm not presenting it to you as any, you know, hard, fast truth. This is just something that is kind of fun to play with. It's an interesting idea that I've come upon and found some uh, startling at times. Um, well, how would I say that? Not results, but yeah, I guess startling results with this. Um, the, let me ask you first, so I can kind of see what, gauge what, where we are. Um, how many in here have ever heard of muscle testing before? So, raise your hands, I'd like to see. So those of you who have um, heard of it, how many of you have played with it to one extent or another? Okay. Um, those of you who have played with it to one extent or another, how many would you say, how many of you would say, well, I'm quite expert at this, I feel very comfortable, w would try it in quite a few situations? Does that apply to any of you? How, what, how much have you? My mom does it. As part of her, what? I mean, does she just do it for fun, or does she use it as part of her? She does it for like health stuff, like nutrition or like medicine stuff. Do you? Does she do it with you, or do you just watch yeah, her? Yeah. Okay, so you're pretty familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, how much have you played with this, buddy? Just starting to learn about it. Okay. Uh, um. This is, in a way, I mean, the thought occurred to me, this is, you, we've, we've kind of, we didn't play with the book, but if, I think one of you in here read the book, oh, it's Bobby who's not here, um, read the book, Int Intuitive Eating. We've heard of that book before, right? We've all heard of that. It's kind of, the basis for intuitive eating is eat mindfully, blah. That's the essence of it. Um, don't get so concerned about what you're eating. Just eat mindfully. Listen to what your body's telling you. Well, this takes intuitive eating to an, a really new level, I think, um, where you're not only listening to your body, but your body is actually going to tell you whether something is good for you or not at that time. And, and my, my first resource on this came, um, I came upon this book, uh, all hammered, but this was written, I think, in about 1970 by a guy by the name of John Diamond, oh, 1979, called Your Body Doesn't Lie. If you can get a hold of this book, it's really, really a cool book. You can probably get it for two bucks on Amazon Books. Um, I think that's how I got this one. It's a used <laughs> book. Um, but the idea behind muscle testing, and the, behi the idea behind this is, um, and this, I read this before I got into the, before I ever heard of muscle testing or kinesiologic, kinesthetic, kinesiology, kinesiology muscle, applied kinesiology, yeah. Um, and I tried this, and I went, wow, that is cool, because the idea behind this and the muscle testing, the idea behind this book is um, there are ways that you can test to tell if what you're going to be eating your body wants or not. It will tell you the, the, the point your body doesn't lie. You mm, can learn how it tells you that. Okay. Um, how, how it does tell you the truth about whatever it is you're planning to eat. Um, and then I came upon another book, which, I don't know, did anyone in here read this, Power Versus Force? It's on the book list. You've read this. Um, this is a gold mine. If you ever want to spend some time learning about this applied kinesiology or muscle testing, probably um, 
he's more written more about it than anybody else. Or at least this book dis describes it better than anyone else. And, and I took a couple pages out of here that I want to walk you through with, and then we'll, we'll do this together. Um, Oh, they're yeah, they're stapled on the they're stapled in the wrong place. Sorry. I'm Read this with me. Um, did everyone get one? It says, kinesiology. Go down to this where it says kinesiology. Would you get my, would, would you let those latecomers in, please? Come on in. <laughs> Not even close. I promise I won't be late again. I really tried, but it's just my nature. <laughs> I like that. You have a gene that is a, a late come, a come late gene? It's a thrill. Yeah? <laughs> you like that spotlight. Yeah. Everyone can. <laughs> There's Bobby again. Um, so read with me this. Um, starting on kinesiology, the study of muscles and their movement especially is applied to physical conditioning. Um, the study of kinesiology first received scientific attention in the second half of the last century through the work of Dr. George Goodhart, who pioneered the specialty he called applied kinesiology after finding that benign physical stimuli, for instance, beneficial nutritional supplements, would increase the strength of certain indicator muscles. Now pay attention to that. The idea behind it, well, I'll read it and I'll explain. Whereas hostile stimuli would cause those muscles to suddenly weaken. The implication was that at a level far below conceptual consciousness, the body knew and through muscle testing was able to signal what was good and bad for it. The classic example cited later in this work is a universally observed weakening of indicator muscles. In other words, you, you don't stay strong. And we'll explain what that means. In the presence of a chemical sweetener, they used, was it aspartame? I think it was that they used. And er every time that was included in the food, or when, when they tested them, they tested weak. In other words, that there was, there was a weakening of the physiology of muscles in the presence of sweetener. Interesting to you. Um, in the late 70s, Dr. John Diamond refined this specialty into a new discipline called behavioral kinesiology. Dr. Diamond's startling discovery was that indicator muscles would strengthen or weaken in the presence of positive or negative emotional and intellectual stimuli as well as physical stimuli. A smile will make you test strong, while the statement, I hate you, will make you test weak. Okay, do you catch that? So, in the presence of, let's see, so, can I see this for a second? So, um, this is a physical stimuli, and if a person tests this on themselves and it tests strong, which sometimes it might, that would indicate the body in this moment, this is a good thing for it. Other times, depending upon chemistry and what's gone on, the body will say, the body will give the weak, uh, it, the muscles will test weak for it, and I'll show you how we do this. And, and that is an indicator that in that moment, this is not good for the body in that moment, okay? Now, 
What he's saying here is not only that, but thoughts about things or so emotional or intellectual stimuli. So you think about, and they use things like um, Hitler, I think. Susan, correct me if I'm wrong on some of these, but they would use pictures of Hitler and universally everyone who saw that picture tested weak. Whereas they would show, was it Christ? I'm trying to remember, they would show pictures of Christ or they would, they would have, without even seeing who the picture was, they would test strong if, if it were Christ. <coughs> Every single time. And so we'll, we'll kind of explore this a little, but that's the idea, is emotional intellectual stimuli. Yes, Erica. So they're, they're, when they're talking about the sweetness, just to clarify, that's when they're like actually doing muscle testing, not like somebody's doing exercise. Let me check the muscle or the strength of it, right? No, it is the, it's it's the testing. Test. Yeah, and I'll show you a different way to do food that's really cool you can do with yourself. Buddy. Um, <coughs> before we go any further, let us explain in detail exactly how one tests especially as readers will certainly wish to try this themselves. Here's Dr. Diamond's outline from his 1979 book, book, Your Body Doesn't Lie. He's got several ways that he does this in here. This is one of them. So, um, let's see. Maggie, can I use you for a sec? This is how it looks. This is one of the ways. There are several. I've seen a dozen different ways that this is done, but this is kind of the standard that you see. And if you go online, you can find um, plenty of examples of people, you know, demonstrating this. So you have, it takes, he says it takes two people to perform a kinesiological test. Unless you can do it on yourself, and you, which you can. Um, choose a friend or family member. Are we friends? Yes. Good, yes. <laughs> um, for testing, we'll call him or her your subject. Have the subject stand erect, right arm relaxed at his side, her side, left arm held out parallel to the floor, elbow straight. So some people you see, they'll do it this way. I've heard that this way is a little bit more accurate. Now here's the funny thing about this. You can put it down for a second. There will be people, if you go online, there's plenty of people who say, you know, like Quack Watch and some of these others will say, this is a this is a crock, and I'm okay with them saying that. My my, with most things, it, once again, it's one of those things where you just have to try it, see if it works, go with it if you like it. But there's no because you'll have as many people will say, I don't believe that for a second, and some of you will be that way. And I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm just asking you to. <coughs> Watch what happens, try it on yourself if you're interested in this because the idea behind this book, Power vs. Force, is you can test this on every single thing under the sun to see if it is accurate or not, if it is a truth or not because uh, when we test her and she tests strong for a statement, the, body will meet, the body's telling you that is a truth. Because the body stays strong in a truth and it goes weak in a lie. You follow that? Does that make sense? Okay, so this is how this looks. We have the subject, stand erect, right arm, relax, so, so like that. And then, so follow with me on this. Face your subject. Here, we'll kind of turn this way. And place your left hand on his right shoulder. So I'm going to do it opposite. Oh wait, see, he goes this way. It doesn't matter that much. Um, to steady him, then place your right hand in the subject's extended left arm just above the wrist. So you put, your, you put your other hand right here. So you put one hand here, the other hand here, and then tell the subject to resist when you try to push her arm down. So you say resist. And then I try to push it down, and she's... She stayed strong. She, I wasn't able, you don't try and, you know, 
crank it down. You just give enough force where you feel a locking. Okay? So it says, now push down on her arm fairly quickly, firmly and evenly. The idea is to push just hard enough to test the spring and bounce of the arm, not so hard that the muscle becomes fatigued. It is not a question of who is stronger, but whether the muscle can lock the shoulder against the push. Okay? And that's, and so now, the idea behind this, or how this works, with that idea of the muscles will stay strong in a truth and will go weak in error, in a falsehood, in a lie, you test it. And the way you do this is, so I would say, okay, now resist, and she stays strong. Now, say, and you, when you do this, you don't ask, does Mars have air? Or you say a statement, and then it gets tested for accuracy. So you would say, Mars has, well, we'll just use something simple. Say, um, my name is Maggie. My name is Maggie. Okay, and then after she says it, you test it, you push down, and she stayed strong. Her, she was able to resist that. Her shoulder was able to lock, okay? Now say, my name is... Mm, Donna. My name is Donna. Well, you did. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Really? Did you say, my name is Donna? My name is Donna. Resist? See, I'm able to push that down much more easily. Now, I really didn't. We didn't stage this before. Um, but that is the I way. I wasn't here on time to stage it before. <laughs> that, That's and, the truth. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's how you do this with, with anything that you are wondering. So um, what would be something that, that you would be interested in knowing if something is accurate or not? Like, is it going to snow this weekend? Something like that? Yeah, don't, snow on Saturday? It, you have to or say, there? it has to be in the present. You, you can't predict, is gold going to go up to 200 points in the next... <laughs> Dang it! Yes. They, they, okay. They've figured it out that you can't mm, shoot into the future. But you, like if somebody's saying something, like if you're listening to somebody and they make a statement, right? You can immediately go, is what this, the, what, this person is telling me the truth. And you test. And if it's as weak, what that's telling you is probably not. That's the idea. Okay? Um, so think of something that is. Does anyone have anything interesting that they'd like to know? Yeah. It's like our magic. crystal ball. I know. I feel like a magic eight ball. Yeah, man. There. Buddy. From what I've learned from it, there has to be something that, like, if they believe in something, because we tested this when I first started learning about it, about um, with an atheist, and we asked the question, um, does God exist? And for one person, it was really strong, and for the atheist, it wasn't. So it has to be something that they that they believe. So if it's some a lie that they really fully believe in, it'll be still strong for them, because that's what they believe. Mm. That's what I found. Out. See, and if According to, um, according to Hawkins, it doesn't make any difference at all. Yeah, as a matter of fact, when they would test, and he tested thousands of people on thousands of things, he did a huge N, you know, huge groups of people, and they would test on um, things like, you know, I mentioned the, the Hitler, or even if you liked Hitler and felt that he was a good person, your belief, you, they would still test weak on him. So, and I don't, so I don't know about the atheist God part. Um, that's something that, there's, there's so much of this, I mean, this is one of the, another one of those, we're just starting to look into this massive mm, pinhole, this pinhole that's looking into a massive something that is giving us more information. We're still learning it as we go. This is, this is real. 79, this is still really new. So. Um, so what we talked about earlier this week, with especially the women fighting breast cancer and their hardiness, 
could this help like on the weekends or, or is that? That's a future right? thought. Okay. That's a future thought. If they, or question. So that would <coughs> But if you phrase it like, you know, my treatment's working now, mm -hmm. would that clue you in? And actually, and tell me if this is what your mom does, they'll do this with a lot of things. I've, I've seen where people use this for um, remedies, like homeopathic remedies or with herbal remedies or with um, aromatherapies. I had one person who... She was helping some people in the stress lab, and she was doing zone therapy and all kinds of things. And, and she, would, she would go down the person, only, I'm going to do this differently with you, put your hand down. Um, there are other ways that you can test besides this. If you want to just do it on yourself, you can just kind of put your finger and your thumb together, and then you push it apart like this, and it will test strong. You know, if it, if it stays, that's a test of strong. If it goes, whoop, that means it's testing weak. Well, she did this. She was going through this whole board of um, aromatherapies with me. She said, I said, because I'm always interested in this stuff. I don't really buy it all, but I'm always interested. And I, I said, she said, there's something that's missing with you Let's find out what, he, what it is. And she went through this whole board and she looked at this. You know, she had these little vials, these little bottles. She went, that one, you know, she tested. And as soon as she went, she, one of them went weak. She said, this is the one that you're supposed to have right now as an aromatherapy. Now, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But something's going on. Something fascinating is going on. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, now, I want to get to the, the other half of this because it's kind of the, it's more interesting or it's more fun. Um, but does that make sense for everyone? And so now, I'm not saying, uh, okay, this is, this is the gospel truth and you should always believe this. But that's all you need to know is what we just did. Try it and watch what happens. See what, what kind of things happen with you. Okay, so I guess I am familiar with this a little bit. I don't know, but I <coughs> where this fits in is mm -hmm. he'll have me put on my arm and then kind of feel places on my neck and you know when it's good it's strong and then I, you know it doesn't I don't try to put my arm down but when it feels something that's not mm -hmm. my arm is down you know it's a fix right there exactly it and it's the same thing with um, that people will test for internal problems you know is it my kidneys no is it my heart no is it my liver you know or I mean is it my kidneys heart liver so, oh, now they know that they should do something. I still would go to the doctor if there's a concern there. But this is interesting to see how, this, how people are using this. And that's, I haven't heard of chiropractors before, but that makes perfect sense how they could just as easily as the person who's doing EFT or who person who's doing any kind of energy therapy or other kinds of therapy. Go, oh, yeah. Um, I, I've had a lot of chiropractors that have tried it. I've also had a lot of chiropractors that have caught them faking the results, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you end up walking out of there with several hundred dollars worth of stuff because that's what your body says you need. Yeah. And I've, I've caught them before going, no, you're not doing it right. You're not pushing it the right places. Yeah. So when they retest, <laughs> you it, it'll come out yeah. different. So, just as a, yeah. a caution. Oh, absolutely. And I would be very careful, especially if there was money involved. If there was money involved, I wouldn't go to it. I, I wouldn't even, if you're wanting me to sell your wares, or you wanted me to buy your wares, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even touch that. Um, if they are making good progress after they do that, I would consider that. Now, the fun part of this, and... and um, that came from this, not at all with this, came from this book was how to test foods to tell if this or that food is good for you right now. And you can do this on your own and it's, it's really, I've seen amazing things happen. Um, we had this guy who lives down the street from us who has, he's about 60 
He has probably the worst arthritis of anyone I've ever met. You shake his hand and it's like shaking, you know, he golfs, he's a pretty good golfer. He's a, he's a really good golfer, but he has horrible um, joint problems. And, um, well, I'll tell you how we do this, and we'll actually like to try this a little with you guys. But he tested so positively for this one thing, it almost, it almost made him fall over. And as soon as he started taking it, he was seeing unbelievably good results for getting better. It was like, oh my gosh. And so how, how this is done, how the diamonds suggest you do this, is you take a food, and you can do this, um, so let's say, uh, I just brought a thing full of food. Um, let's say you have a food, and it doesn't matter what it is, and you, the way he describes to do this is rather than test this way, um, first of all, you, you ask yourself, it's, it's a matter of moving forward or backwards, okay? So you say to yourself, first of all, you have to determine what, what yes and what no means. So you say, when something is yes, so you start out by saying, when something is yes, I move this direction. And you just, you just stand there, very balanced, and you say, when something is yes, I move this direction. And after a moment there, you'll notice you, you, your body will pull you one way or the other. Because for, for most people, they move forward when, the, when it's yes. They move backward when it's no. I know, this is really pushing it. <laughs> but this is really cool. Um, and so you say, um, so for me, I know that moving forward is yes. And then you, then you say something like, this what I have in my hands or this apple that's in my hands is good for me now. And then you just kind of settle in and it's pulling me backwards. Okay? Which tells me, and you think, well, what's wrong with an apple? You should be having, this apple's good for you. You should be having one a day. Well, apparently, it's not the right time for me to have an apple right now. My body's saying, not right now. And I was expecting to go forward. I mean, I love apples. There might be something with this apple that my current body chemistry is saying, nope, not right now. Here's a nature, I just pulled this off our pantry, Nature Valley peanut bar. <laughs> so, so you say, this, what's in my hand, is good for me now. And you just kind of settle, and oh, it pulled me forward. And I know you guys are going, yeah, you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> I'm really not. You pull that into your chest with a little more tender care than you did the apple. Really? Because I was expecting to go this way. And I don't even like these. Um, so here's what I'd like to do. Does this make sense for you? And that there's nothing more to that. Um, I just have one question. Yeah. How do you know, like, how much to test, or like, what to test, or what if it, you need something not in your? I guess how did you find? How many foods did you have to go through for your, that guy with arthritis to figure out? Oh, I didn't. I just I had one, okay. and I just I because somebody told me it was actually one of those multi-level juices mm -hmm. that are like a super juice. Oh, yeah. And so somebody let me try it, and I was like, whatever, fine. But I, they said, it's really great for arthritis. So I, I said, Don, come over, check this out. And he was, he was as disbelieving. He went like this. It, it really was this dramatic. And he was not, he, he's like some of you, come on. He went like this. He said, this, what's in this bottle, let's see, that's pulling me back again. Um, but he said, this what's in this bottle is good for, let me do this. <laughs> it's okay. This what's in this bottle is good for me now. And he just went, he went, oh my gosh. And I went, 
the you, you, uh, you just made that up, didn't you? He said, no. I said, try it again. He said, this what's in this bottle is good for me now. And he just, it was, an, it was like someone was pulling on him on a rope, pulling him on a rope. And sure enough, he went back and tried it. And he said, I can't believe how good my fingers are feeling. And my hands, they, they haven't felt this good in ages. So something to this. I wouldn't bet my life on it. But it's an interesting thing. Like, we spend a lot of money on supplements. Mm -hmm. And I think most of those supplements that we take just come out the other end. Or come out the other end. There's actually new research that, especially single vitamins, but even the more vitamins <coughs> aren't good for you and are actually causing cancer. Yeah, there's interesting. There's to do with antioxidants, huh? Is that what you're talking about? saying that too much or that if you're not getting the complete vitamin, like if you're just taking mm -hmm. B6 or whatever and not the full complex and not getting it from its natural mm -hmm. and foods and stuff, it actually is the same I heard something the about that. Mm -hmm. so to not take Especially with cancer. Yeah. Um, so who wants to try this? Does anyone want to? Okay. To. Come on up here. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to, how, I'm, how I'd like to do this is, so come on up here. Um, and I'm going to put, just right here, I'm going to put these foods in a bag so she doesn't know what they are. Okay, so we're, it's going to like a blind. Uh, I've never done this before. <laughs> so, um, let's see. I wonder how I should do this. I'm going to like make it so you guys can't even see either for just a second. So, let's see. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> it's all right. You didn't see that, did you? No, I was looking for okay. I was just not looking. So, okay, so I just stand. Yeah. You just, matter, just get, you know, mountain pose and put it right there and just say, well, oh, first of all, yeah. Are you pretty hydrated? Um, I think so. Okay. I haven't. I just got done with the workout. I've eaten. So you may be a little bit. I might be low on my electrolytes. It's the water part that is. I don't have any water. Um, I've just been drinking it. So just say, just stand there and say, um, say, I move this way when the answer is yes. This way? Yeah, I move this way when the answer is yes. And just settle in, just kind of relax and watch what happens. I move this way when the answer is yes. Okay. So did you feel that pull? Yeah. It okay. Didn't move for a while. I was getting nervous. Yeah. <laughs> then but then, then, I don't need to test for no then. No, because you know. Okay, so I know this is a parlor trick. <laughs> Magic potion. So now say this what's in this book, this bag, is, this good, for in this bag is good for me. You feel a pull? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's funny. I'm trying to stay like this. this. That's surprising, huh? Okay. Let's see. What, and what Maybe did you I'm say before you? No, it should it should work. I mean, unless you're really dehydrated. Okay, so put this put a like right. Yeah, so. This what's in this bag is good for me. I don't really move that much, but I felt a little bit backwards. Yeah. Is it supposed to be like? Yeah. Do I need to say right now? Um, no, you don't necessarily need to. That was Diet Coke. Oh, that, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I mean, good she went back, not oh. it's good. This is good for me oh. ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Say. I'll have to readjust myself. Say. A little of this, what's in this bag, is good for me now. And if you don't move, then it doesn't matter, is the idea. Well, I'm not moving. So, so it doesn't matter. So, so you, the idea is, is it? you could, it's, <coughs> it's this limu supposed to have, it's like premium seaweed, it's supposed to be really good for you. It's one of those silly juices that, let's see. I know seaweed. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -mm. I haven't. I haven't. Okay, try this one. This one's in this bag is good for me. Yeah. Pulling back just a little bit, not very much. So you apparently don't need anything right now. No. I feel like I need something. Can I try my cookies? Yeah. My cookies? This was, these were craisins. Mm. Cran apple raisins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we myself five breakfast cookies? I'm not like that. <coughs> I just want to try it because I was starting to eat them and then you were talking about like, food and I was like, baby, I don't need them. Okay. I feel like I actually. Okay, so this one's in this bag. It's good for me now. Pulls you a little forward. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. How bad did you want those cookies before you did? Yeah, she was going for it. I was indifferent. I need food, but I don't know what to do. Now, here's the thing that I'm pretty sure about this. No, the good. Thank you very much for um, the help. Here's the thing that I'm pretty sure about as I've played with this. I, it's not a science. Mm -hmm. Nor should you, you know, go into the store. I, I've, we've had students in the past who they walk up and down the aisles going, <laughs> you know, which, which bread, you know, it's, it's, you can, yeah. Now, the funny thing, no, you, you, it's, you make that as a joke, but we have got so consumed, no pun intended, we've, we've become co so consumed with what are the right and wrong foods for us. Kids eat dirt. <laughs> and sometimes there's a reason for that. There might be minerals in that dirt that they're eating that their body is going, man, let's get some in here somehow. We've got so consumed with, oh, I shouldn't have, mm, you know, this donut or I shouldn't have this... Well, there are times when your body might need that. And you're depriving of it thinking, oh, it's the wrong food. Mm -hmm. Our problem is not necessarily what foods we eat. I don't think is how much we eat. I think that's the problem. <coughs> but I think just about everything, you know, has its place. Sugar is fine at certain times. And you need that at certain times. Other times, Probably not. Now, the thing that I, I'm pretty sure, because when, um, when you mentioned that, or when we did the banana, or we did the whatever, the thing that I have discovered about this, and this is kind of my own little, I haven't read anyone else who says this, but after playing with this for so many years, I think we think we need more than we do, for food anyway. I think we need, so when you test, you think, well, it's a banana, of course I should test strong for it. Well, you might already have sufficient potassium and whatever carbohydrates that are in that banana. That you, having another one isn't necessarily going to benefit you any. Does that make sense? And so when we start testing ourselves and we go, man, there's an apple. I'm not supposed to eat an apple now. What am I supposed to eat? Well, maybe it's nothing. 
we've just got into the habits and the beliefs. Oh, it's breakfast. I guess I should eat something. Oh, it's lunch time. I guess I, I'm supposed to eat something. There's no law that says, or universal cosmic force that says, you got to eat these meals at these times. We've just bought into it. And so when you start doing this, when you start playing with it, and you go, this is good for me now, and it says, no, then don't eat it. Or eat it, then thank heaven you have a liver. <laughs> That's why we have a liver. It's forgiveness. <laughs> Isn't it? That's why I have kidneys and liver. But does that make sense to you guys? So, my, my suggestion for you with this is experiment. Get the book. If it really fascinates you, and some people will go, yeah, never. And I don't care. But some people will go, wow, I think that might be interesting to see if I can mm, have a better connection with my body and what I'm putting into it it and see and, and watch what happens. And there are many times where I'll, I'll look at my cabinet and I'll go, my, the food pantry, and the thought will go, oh, I should test that. No, I'm not even going to test. I'm just going to eat it. You know? That's okay. You don't have to get anal on this. It's just, it's a really interesting idea of the if the body doesn't lie, and that's a, an if. I still, it's still an if. It's not a when. If the body doesn't lie, it, some, it behooves us to try to hook into that when people are saying things and we think, I don't know about that, test it, you know. Because I've had many times where somebody will say something, I'll watch TV, and somebody will say something and I'll just test that. And, oh, I don't. I have a sense that it's a lie, I test it, and sure enough, um, it comes across as that wasn't accurate. Could the fact that you already have a, I'm going to call it like a preconceived notion to it being false, that it's going to... It could. It could. And there have been things that I was absolutely dead on sure were true, tested false. And I later found out yeah, sure not. So, um, it's easy to try to fake it, but if you just, if you maintain a calm, you know, attitude about it and just, okay, how is this? Okay, that's true. Okay, that's true. That's false. And if it's feelings, how can it be a lie? Like, if it's, if you're testing yeah. a feeling. Yeah, that, uh, it's more with facts that you test this on. It's more with, like, this guy would be a good president right now. No, oh, okay. I've done that. With feelings, as you guys say, you test it on if this feeling good for me. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. You could test it on, is this feeling a good one for me? And that, that would follow, yeah. So, like, was Ian being truthful about what happened at school? Maybe, yeah. Or is it good for me to, it's good for me to feel jealous about this. No, okay, I shouldn't feel jealous. Is that what you're saying? Kind of thing. Yeah. Read, I strongly urge you, if you can plow, th this, is, this is one of the most, this is probably one of the top ten books I've ever read. Power versus Force. It is unlike any other book I've ever read. And... Um, it gives you the, the idea that you might just have access to mm, one more truth source, which is you. And so, good stuff. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday.